Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marke of Living Streams International, bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Still on the Christmas roll, and I've been thinking, and, and to be honest with you, I always say that for me, Christmas is not just an event, but it's an, a principal field event. And uh, I don't really care what day you choose to make Christmas, whether you do it or not, I, it doesn't really bother me. But for me, the whole revelatory principles invested in the story of the birth of Christ. And that's, for me, that's the most interesting thing. I'm still in Luke chapter one, and I'm still looking at one of the critical figures that has to do with uh, the birth of Christ. And that was Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth. Zacharias has been a priest for many years. And for many years, you know, the Bible says in, in Luke chapter one, that he has, been going to the, he has been going to the temple to pray for people, to pray with people, intercede, offer sacrifices, and do all the things. So for many years, Zachariah had, Zacharias had faithfully, or he kept going to, the, to, to do the same duty. And some of the duties that he was doing, including blessing the, uh, other people's children, newborn babies and all those things, when they are presented in the temple, for him to hold them and pronounce a blessing on them. And he kept doing it, he kept doing it, he kept doing it. You see, so he would go, he would sacrifice, he would go, he would pray, intercede, he would go, he would go and serve. And he kept doing it. And the Bible says he has been doing it for years. He has been doing it for years. He has been praying for other people, has seen the needs of other people being met. He had blessed other people's children and, and, and watched his wife walk away barren. He's been to places, he's done a lot of things that, I mean, for other people, and yet he had a need. He was the one interceding for other people. He was the one praying for other people. He was the one making sure that everybody else was right, and yet he had a lack in his life. How, how traumatic it would be when you go, you know, sometimes, what I'm trying to say is that, listen, I mean, what you don't have screams at the presence of what others have. If you don't have money and you see other people with money, your poverty screams and other people's prosperity. That, that's just how life is like. I mean, honest, honest barrenness screamed at the sight of penniless children. That's what it is. It, it announces itself loudly to you. You feel the impact of it. And Zachariah kept going to the temple, the place where he's going to meet other people's children, the place where he's going to hear the mirth and the pageantry and the, and the, and the celebration of other people. And he kept doing that. He kept doing that. He kept going there to sacrifice, to serve, and to intercede. He kept doing it faithfully. And yet the priest had a problem. And then comes the beautiful part. The Bible says, one day he got up as was his custom. It was time for his work. He got up like as other days he has been getting up and slowly made his way to the place to go and perform the same duty and the same thing that he has been doing over the years. Yet with a need, yet with a lack. He went to do the same thing. But this time, a visitation of God. If Zechariah had, had folded his arm in despondency and said, what's the point? How can I be a testimony? Now, what kind of testimony am I given about the faithfulness of God? What kind of testimony am I given about the grace of God? What kind of testimony am I given about the power of God? He'd be going through all these emotions. But Zechariah said, it is time for me to save. It is time for me to sacrifice. It is time for me to intercede. I will do it. Irrespective of how I feel, irrespective of what's going on in my life, irrespective of the pain I have, irrespective of all these challenges, I'm going to get up and still go and do what I need to do. And it was at that place, that moment in time, when a visitation of God came. Here's a clear cut path. You know, sometimes when we, 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 we serve God, and there are things that we have done, and there are things that we are believing God for, and we've laid our lives at the altar of service, we've laid our lives at the altar of sacrifice, we've laid our lives at the altar of intercession, 
and seeing being a blessing to other people and yet we don't have a song of celebration in our lives and yet we can't lift up our hands and give that testimony that other people are given sometimes you wonder whether it's worth it but you know one thing the Bible says do not be weary of well-doing for in due season for in due season Zachariah never knew but there's a day that has also been appointed. And the, here's the thing. For him, his own was going to be bigger and better than everybody else. His testimony was going to be the, a fantastic one. His child was going to be the person who prepared the way of the Lord. His child was going to have multitudes coming to be baptized. His child was going to gain a powerful spiritual notoriety that no other child he had dedicated would ever have that kind of testimony. So you know what? Sometimes God saves the last, the best for the last. Sometimes God saves the best for the last. Do not be weary. Still go to church. Still intercede. Still pray. Still sacrifice. Still serve. Don't fold up your arms and say, this thing we've done it, uh, we're getting tired. Do not be weary of well-doing. For in due season, you'll reap the benefits. I know what I'm talking about because I've been through it too. And I want to tell you that right? there are things that God does and I have testimonies of what God has done that will blow people's mind. And sometimes you just want to keep quiet over them. Here's the thing. If he has done it for somebody, he will do it for me. It's just a matter of time. So do not be weary of well-doing. God will do it. Just keep going. See you later.